Okay, today we have a Dell Inspirion N5110 that the customer says boots to a white screen. So we will power it on and immediately we hear some error beeps and we get the white screen that they said it's booting to. So we'll go ahead and power this off and close it unplug its power, flip it over, and when we flip it over we notice that there's some missing screws on the bottom, which is a sign that someone else has probably tried to work on this. So we'll remove the battery so that the laptop has no power to it. And another sign someone's worked on this and maybe done some damage is the memory cover and that has its screw and a little plastic piece that belongs on the bottom on the top. So we're going to place that on over here, our little magnetic pad here. And adjust that a little better. And normally this would come up with it, so we're just going to use a little pry tool here and get underneath it, pull it off. This is also where you would add your RAM or check your RAM and that if needed. With this one here there is no screw to remove the optical drive so we can just slide it out because that's held on by that little door. We'll set it aside and now we're going to remove all these little screws down here which like I told you some are missing and you want to try and make sure you get them all back in the same spot they came from. So we're going to slide this around there and place all these on our little pad over here at the side so that we know where they came from. And take all these little screws out, working our way around. And I'm using a PH1, which just stands for a Phillips 1 screwdriver, to remove all these screws. And here, that one's missing. Take this one out. That one's missing, this one here, and then that last one there is also missing, so. Alright, so now that we have that done, we need to flip it back over. And open it back up, and we're going to have to remove the keyboard here. For that, I have just a really small flat blade screwdriver. You can also use your opening tool over there. There's little things here that you want to press in, little notches you press in and then lift the keyboard up. And once I get it up, I'm going to leave my tool under it there. Come in. It's not always good to use metal tools on plastic. So I probably should have got my plastic sponger out and used it, but we are already doing it this way, so we're going to continue. We can also slide this down, one of the good things these little opening tools are good for. I should work to get this all loose along here and pop these little clips loose. Sometimes they come loose easier than other times. Slide that one in. And see if we can. Sometimes you can just slide your fingers down across there and pop them loose too. Once they've been slid in some. Hmm. Last one's a little tough. There we go. 
And sometimes your keyboard will stick at the bottom. It's got little prongs to hold it in. Flip your keyboard up and you should see it connected. And that right there. You're going to flip up this little lever. Slide that one out. And set our keyboard aside here. Flip this up, pull this, flip this one up, use the tab to pull it out, and again flip the last one up, slide it out. Now, now this here, we have four screws holding it on, looks like there should be six. Oh, another sign that someone's done a repair. Not put them all back. Again, we're going to set our screws so we know where they go. And Set that up there. Now that we have all those out and all of our little connectors disconnected, we should be able to start lifting this up. Get all your little plastic clips to come loose. It should come up. And there we go. And you want to be careful because your laptop's going to want to fall backwards now. And first thing we want to do is examine the video cable. And I think we've found our problem right off the bat. If you look right there, the video cable, you should be able to see that it's actually out just slightly. So we are going to push that back in so it is all flush. Could have been a screen they replaced or something and just didn't get that all back in. So now that we've done that, we're going to test and see if we have fixed our problem since we found at least one problem. And if you listen to the eight beeps, that is exactly what it told you is that there was a video cable problem. If you look that up on the internet. And reconnect all of your cables. And if you notice on your cables, there's usually little lines giving you an idea how far in they should go. So that when you close it. You want to try and have them in that far. Now set the phone down so that I can get that cable in there. So you see we closed it and that one's in there. I'm going to slide that one in. Shut it. You see the black line covered. This one here doesn't really have the line, so we put it in there. And next, we're going to put our keyboard back here. And that, and we just set it down here, upside down. And now we're going to take this cable. And this is where a lot of people have problems putting this cable in, not getting it in all the way. And some of your keys on the keyboard won't work if you do that. So if you ever have that problem, this little cable here is probably your problem. And as you can see, he doesn't always like to go in the best. So you have to work him in. And get it all down in there. Make sure it's slid in. Flip your little black lock piece down. And we'll show you that it's there, covering up. And one of the things we probably should have done is put all our screws back in, but if you did forget that, you can 
put in your screws now to hold your plate down. And again, making sure you get them all back in in the same spot they came out. Only four on this one should have been six, but two missing. Now you're going to take it and set your keyboard down there. And if you look at the bottom of the keyboard, you're going to see little prongs. You just slide them into place, and as you put it down, it will slide down in there. Push it down, you're going to hear it all snap back into place, push down on your case and try to snap it all in, and close it, flip it back over, and again we have a towel here to keep from adding any more scratches or anything to it while we work on it. You're going to put your optical drive back in, and now we're going to start putting all of our screws back in where they came out of. So, stick all them in there and just hand tighten them. You don't have to go very tight. We don't want to strip them out. And probably after this video is done, we will see if we can look up some extra screws for this person to help them with their laptop. Because if the screws were in it, they're meant to be there. And this one doesn't want to tighten, so it's a good possibility that... Someone has already stripped this one out. And actually, nope, there we go. It just wasn't clicked into place. Now that we got that one into place, it tightened. And there we go again. Some people also number with chalk or something to tell them where screws go. However you do it so that you know where to put your screws back. Is the best way. And a lot of times we test before we completely reassemble this but I am really sure that this is what's wrong with it, so I didn't test it actually before I reassembled it. So we may have to disassemble this and try it again if this doesn't fix it. And we will pop this back into place and down, and we'll put it back the way they had it. And... Let's see if we can get our screw here and put that in place put our battery in snap it and lock it in place and now we're going to flip our laptop back over open it up and hit power and look at that, we have a screen. So hopefully we can save someone, and you can see it's not happy that we didn't shut it down properly, so you can just tell it to start Windows normally. And you can see there's a screen booting into Windows, and there is no beeps. So it looks like we have this one fixed and ready to go.